hello this is data sufficiency lesson 1 in this i will discuss what actually the data sufficiency is with examples first of all what is the difference between the data sufficiency that is called ds and the quant what is the actual difference between ds and quant now in quant we have to completely solve the questions and calculate the answer whereas in ds we only need to check whether the data is sufficient or not to answer the question check whether the data is sufficient or not that is the only thing that that we need to do in ds we don't need to calculate the exact answer for example uh, if i say that uh, find the volume what is the volume of cylinder my question is what is the volume of cylinder what is the volume of cylinder this is my question now statement is given to me uh, the statement is first statement I'm, this is only statement i have the statement says that uh, the radius is equals to 108.76 cm and height of the cylinder is 109.72 cm this is given to me now if this question comes in quant i need to apply the formula volume i know that volume of a cylinder is equals to pi r square h so i need to calculate pi this is 22 by 7 this is r 108.76 whole square into h 109.72 i need to completely solve this and cal then calculate the answer whereas in ds i know that volume of cylinder is pi r square h where i know pi i know r i know h this data is sufficient to answer the question this data is sufficient to answer the question i will simply say that we know r we know h we can always calculate the volume of cylinder that is pi r square h so this data is sufficient to answer the question so that is the basic difference in ds and quant you only need to check whether the data given is sufficient to answer the question or not in ds the data is given always in the form of statement the data will always be provided to in the form of statements now very important the data given in the statement is sufficient to answer the question only when we get a unique answer only when we get a unique answer from the data provided in the statement then only we can say that the data or the statement given is sufficient to answer the question otherwise data is not sufficient to answer the question i will explain you with examples now as i discuss only two types of questions are there in ds first type is what is the value of x or find the value of x the topic could be different but the question will start with what or find second type of question in ds are of is type of question where is x is equal to zero this is a question and you need to find the answer now statements are given these three statements i have i have taken is this statement sufficient to answer the question we will check it means that x will be equals to 2 because only 2 cube is equals to 8 now what was the question question was what is the value of x we got a value of x as 2 we got a unique value it means this statement 1 is sufficient to answer the question as i told you whenever we get a unique answer the statement is sufficient to answer the question x cube is equals to minus 8 now x would be how much minus 2 because minus 2 cube is only 8 now what was the question what is the value of x again we got a unique answer this statement is also sufficient to answer the question tick mark means sufficient x square is equal to 16 what is the value of x it could be plus 4 or it could be minus 4 both values are true plus 4 square is 16 minus 4 square is also 16 now what was the question find the value of x x value could be plus 4 or minus 4 here i'm not getting a unique answer unique means single answer must be there i'm not getting a unique answer so this statement third this statement third is not sufficient to answer the question because i'm not getting a unique answer so very important we must get a unique answer in order to say that the data is sufficient to answer the question second type of question are bit tricky one is type question now is x is equal to zero first my question is that what will be the answer of is type question is type of question the answer will always be in the form of yes or no now question is is x greater than zero 
x cube is 27 so can I say the x would be only 3 because 3 cube is 27 now what was my question is x greater than 0 my answer is yes x greater than 0 because x is 3 which is greater than 0 so answer is yes so this statement is sufficient to answer the question because I am getting a unique answer yes x cube is minus 27 now this will be equals to x is equals to minus 3 minus 3, 3 cube is minus 27 now what was the question is x greater than 0 my answer is no x is not greater than 0 again I am getting a unique answer this statement is sufficient because answer will always be in the form of yes or no either you get complete yes the statement is sufficient when you get complete no the statement is again sufficient because you are getting a unique answer no this x is not greater than 0 when I say x square is equal to 4 now x would be how much this could be plus 2 or minus 2 both are true for plus 2 the answer is yes what about the question is x greater than 0 for when x is plus 2 the answer is yes it is greater than 0 or minus 2 it is not greater than 0 so a yes or no both are true simultaneously so whenever yes or no comes both are true it means that this statement is not sufficient because I am getting yes as well as no simultaneously two values of x for one it is yes for one it is no it means that statement is not sufficient I am not getting a unique value so very important if you get complete yes the statement is sufficient if you get complete no again the statement is sufficient when you get yes or no it is possible or it not possible then it you can say that the statement is not sufficient these are the only two types of question in data sufficiency so that was the all about the basics of data sufficiency in the next class i will discuss the questions based on data sufficiency thank you